All right, so I wanted to real quickly touch on realistic maintenance weight set points for women. So I say women generally because they're the ones that want to lose that last five or last 10 or last 15 pounds or whatever it may be. Um, of course, that this is relevant to men as well, uh, but women generally fall into this category a little bit more. So first problem with this, they have no idea what an actual realistic weight, uh, healthy weight or maintenance weight is for them right? They have an idea that they saw online or their friend or on Instagram or whatever it is that's probably irrelevant to them. Um, two, their coach doesn't talk to them about this or they don't have anyone to talk to them about this as to what things they need to look for to actually figure out what is realistic, okay? So what are those things? Uh, hormonal health, um, homeostatic hunger signaling, not having crazy cravings and things all the time, you know, normal hunger cueing. Hunger is okay. Intense hunger cravings intensely, um, very frequently might not be normal. Okay. Uh, performance, well being, you know, how do you feel? How do you perform cognitively? How do you perform in the gym? How do you perform on a day to day basis? What is your just overall general energy like? Okay. So, of course, with this, there are a lot of factors that could impact these things, right? So, there could be a whole bunch of um, environmental factors or other things that would impact how you feel, how you perform, and even what weight set point is realistic for you to hold without, you know, feeling, uh, feeling lousy, right? So <clears throat> let's say hypothetically, this person is covering all these environmental factors. They're working with a the coach, they're working on these things, the things that we should be looking at, right? So next up, what weight set point is going to be realistic for them to hold and have homeostatic hormone function. So, you know, looking at things like menstrual cycles, severity of menstrual cycles, regularity of them, hormones overall, adrenal function, all these things, right? Um, GI function. So where can they stay where their body is essentially going to be happy and essentially going to function normally? That's the takeaway here. Um, weight set point, once all of those other factors are covered, really should boil down to what they f feel and perform best at. So, uh, you know, genetically, not every person is going to maintain the look that they maybe want or think they should they should have based on whatever um, whatever benchmark they've set for themselves based on social media or their friends or or again whoever, right? So I think that this is where a lot of people go wrong and um, end up trying to pursue something that maybe isn't sustainable or isn't uh, going to also, isn't going to allow them to feel good and function good, especially for gen pop. And I say maintenance because, of course, there are times where you might go above or below that. Competing, for example, that's not maintenance. I'm trying to grow more muscle and pushing, you know, calorically, um, overfeeding, things like that. That's not maintenance, right? This is not, that is not maintenance weight. Contest prep, that is not maintenance weight. Like I'm literally talking about a weight that this person, a weight and body fat, right? We're not just talking about weight. We're obviously talking about body composition that this person can maintain and function normally and feel good overall in general as a whole. So, um, this isn't something that you're gonna know right off the bat. Like it, it will take time to, to learn this. It may take some trial and error. It may take some up and down cycles of uh, body composition changes to learn this. It's going to take reviewing labs. It's going to take reviewing biofeedback. Does it need to be complicated? Not necessarily, but it will usually take some time to figure out. And um, once that's figured out, that's, that's essentially where where your body's probably going to feel best and function best at and probably the spot that you should try to be around most of the time if you're a gen pop person within maybe five to ten percent up or down depending on what other things that you're doing and what your environment's like so something to keep in mind when you are setting a body composition goal as a gen pop client or talking to a coach about a body composition goal you need to figure out what is realistic and what will work for your body rather than just using some arbitrary look or weight or body fat or whatever it might be without um, investigating all these other parameters.